As winter came in 1107 AD, the Hungarian border had been secured with the capture of Belgrade and allowed Jojelas the opportunity to rest his troops and prepare for the upcoming western expansion. The reclaimist in him wanted to head to Italy as soon as possible, to step on the ground that once belonged to his people before the rest was lost. But the army had to rest and replenish, and he had to decide whether to march overland to the north and On the eastern front, despite spending time with his family, Alexius still felt the loss of his men in the confrontation against the Sejukes. As his men rested in Paris, he accepted that more men will have to die for the empire to expand, and for the glory that he seeked. While he recruited more men for the Eastern March, he kept an eye on the border in case the Sejuks returned. Hello everyone, I'm your host Warrior Angel, welcome back to the Phoenix Rises, my narrative let's play for Medieval 2 Total War. In the last episode, Yoyanis managed to capture the town of Belgrade, securing the border that the Empire shares with Hungary, as well as having another settlement in place to defend the Empire should any of the Western factions get into their head to try and invade, while I'm invading their lands. As you can see though in Belgrade, the walls did take a little bit of damage thanks to the siege, so I'll take the opportunity to repair them. And as I went to try and retrain some of the troops, I did notice that the army itself is lacking a bit in terms of manpower. As you can see, thanks to all the sieges and conquests, the army is taking a few casualties despite their more veteran status. So I'm going to have to try and sort that out shortly. Before I do that though, I take the opportunity to order some buildings to be built in Belgrade, including an Orthodox church to spread the faith and to deal with any public order issues I might face from it. With all that done then, I decided to try and take the army south. If I take it towards the southern region, I will be able to send off the army to the respective recruitment stations and get them replenished. I did need to leave a garrison behind and I decided to return the units to take advantage of the free upkeep I get for some of the units while they're garrisoned. So I left behind the two weakest of the Katoritoi spearmen in order to keep the Belgrade under control while the rest of the army headed down south. It's going to take a couple of turns for them to arrive, but once they get down, they can start resting and being replenished. After they're replenished though, the next target will be Italy, trying to secure the homeland of the Roman Empire. Once I've done that then, I take the opportunity just to go through some of the other towns, making sure that all the buildings I had in mind, such as land clearance and the drill square, be completed. And as I said, I decided I'm going to use Corinth as my main recruitment station for my infantry. Arta, I'm going to take advantage and use the Blister Maker to build Blister, which will help in the sieges and the upcoming expansion. And in Dehatrian, I decided I was going to build a stables as well as the Boia there. That will allow me then to recruit the spit more specialist units, such as the Toxite and my mounted Aquate units. While I was doing my tour of the western provinces, I did notice a Thessalonica that I had a mine being built. It reminded me then that I could actually build one as well as Corinth. Personally, I like mines. It costs a little bit of money to get them going, but they do give you a nice little return on your investment in the long run. So I decided to queue it up ready to be built later on and once I had the money and the other buildings were finished being built. As I was doing all this though, I noticed that Belgrade's public order was really low, and despite lowering the taxes in the region, still pretty bad. As to why, as you can see, it's due to a combination of unrest and religious unrest. Now the unrest I can't do much about, I'll have to wait for it to settle, but the religious one I can do. The Catholic faith is quite strong in the region, so with the Orthodox Church being built, alongside my patriarch, Nicolaus the Unorthodox in the region, this should allow me to eventually convert the population over to the true faith and gain some better control in the region. In the meantime, to try and help out a bit, I do have some more units going up to act as a garrison in the town. I got a unit of Toxite archers already on their way. Yes. As you can see, it will still take a couple of turns for them to arrive. And with the surplus of Toxite units I've got currently stationed at Constantinople, thanks to a previous mission, I sent another unit up as well. Still going to take a couple of turns, but not only will they allow the public order to increase, but also act as a garrison against any attacks by the Western factions once the expansion goes underway. I did notice at Constantinople as well, I did have another family member. Heraclinus happens to be an adopted son of Yoyanis from a few turns ago. And, well, he's actually visited the Constantinople himself. That's given him a good level of piety, which is pretty handy. But, as you can see, he's not a bad commander with several good traits. So I decided to send him off to join with Yoyanis' uh, army in the western provinces. Having an extra general in the army should prove quite useful and eventually he will be able to lead his own army once they get the financial situation under control. Over in the eastern provinces, Alexis and his army have been resting in Barris Castle, giving me the opportunity to try and retrain them back to full strength. 
As you can see, I've got quite a few units to try and do so, and it will take a little bit of time. But it'll be worth it, because then it'll give me an experienced army to be able to carry on with the battle against the Sajukes. This also gives Alexius time to try and come to terms with the loss of his men. As you can see a bit further down, it actually affected him so badly, it's actually become a trait of his, a personal loss. As you can see, it doesn't like the slaughter of battle, and he's lost too many friends. So, as you can see, it gives him minus one command and minus one from its hit points, but increases his piety. This is going to cause some problems, because with that sort of personality he's developing, it's not something that he would want to do harsh measures against the, you know, rebels at Anconian and Anaka, Ankara, I should say, up in the north. But we do have someone who could do the job for him. We've got Limonos here up in the senior. Now, I adopted him using, well, he's now unofficially, oh, officially, I should say, Alexis's adopted son. As you can see, he's a good commander and he's also dread, so doing things like exterminating populations and soldiers will actually be something to increase his stats. Something to consider when I eventually go on. I will see about bringing him to join with Alexius in the army and use a Mintusnen as a governor and probably an Anconian as it is a large town and it would put him in good st st with his administrative skills. While I'm over in the east as well, I decided then to sort out some of the buildings I would need. For example, in Barris I decided to build land clearance as I figured that would help me out a little bit with a little bit of extra cash but also allow me to build up the population growth a little bit. Might only be about half a percent, but the quicker, uh, well I should say the higher the population growth, the quicker I can get to the next stage, which will give me access to better building buildings and therefore better troops. Over in Dardania, I decided then to build up a bowyer as well as a leather tanner and tainer. This will allow me to have it as a secondary recruitment zone to allow me to build my toxite, as well as any other troops such as it, the mounted aquate over in the stables. And then just go through the other buildings just to make sure that everything's been going smoothly. As you can see, I'm building a lot of land clearance in the regions. And over in Constantinople, I've also got the problem now. I've noticed that I don't have any population growth. It's staying constant at 15,089. So I lower the taxes in the region, which is going to be a slight problem. And I also look for the other buildings and see what to try and go with. The marketplace looked pretty good. It would allow me to get a bit of extra cash in as well as increase the population. And I was considering going for blister towers, as that would be quite useful as a defense in case Constantinople gets attacked. But uh, there's no rush for me to do it right now. I did have the other thing as well, as I wanted to see about maybe building up either a library or, as you can see, an Asenium. As this will allow me then to actually, I believe I'm pronouncing that right anyway, Lachaisium. This will allow me then to get a good general education. I can send my generals there and that will actually increase their stats. It can depend on, well, either administratively or military, depending on which way they're leaning at the time. I'll do a quick a couple of checks, just to make sure there's anything else I wanted to do, such as moving the garrison forces and that. I decided then I'm just going to go ahead and end the turn. As you can see, then I've still got my uh, diplomat in the other fleet trying to head around over to Scotland. It's still going to take a little while. And my merchant is still slowly making his way over, and Theophorphus is still heading up towards Denmark. Hopefully to allow me to get an alliance with the Danish. We'll see what happens later on. At the start of my next turn, I was given an offer to improve the Theologians Guild I've got currently at Constantinople. It's going to cost 2,000 florins, but it will give me a master level one, which will be quite useful for my priests. The better the priests, the better I'll be able to convert people over to the Orthodox faith, so I decided to build it. As you can see as well, Belgrade has started rioting, with over 400 citizens killed and 20 of my soldiers as well. Unfortunately, there's not much I can actually do. It's still going to take a little while for me to get the population under control, and I can't retrain the garrison, so I have to wait for the Toxite archers I've got coming from Constantinople to try and sort it out. Cosmos here is still trying to make his way down to the Silk Roads, but he has this habit of stopping at pretty much every single settlement and army on the way trying to sell his goods. The annoying little shit, he's trying to actually try and make a profit instead of trying to give me the money. But thankfully, he does tell me at least where the Saju capital is, which is going to be pretty important when it comes to trying to wipe them out. Although, speaking of wipe them out, as you can see, it's going to be a little bit different. Courts. The Saju Empire are actually the current leader regards to the military side of things, so that's something I'm going to have to keep an eye out for when I actually try to fight them. A couple of things have been built, as well as repaired, such as the walls of Belgrade. 
But also these drill square and Corinth has finally been built. That will allow me to actually re-train my scouted yes. toy spearmen and be able to recruit more, which is going to be quite good for Yoyanis with his western expansion. Still going to take a little few turns for him to actually arrive, but it shouldn't be okay. And in the meantime, I can send the skirmishing unit that I had planned for him over to join the army. The Toxitaes are still slowly marching their way towards Belgrade. It's still going to take at least three turns for the first one to arrive. This is unfortunate, but hopefully the garrison there will come get the rebellion under control as quickly as possible. But over at Corinth, I'm allowed to now to actually retrain the scout toy unit I had stationed at R2 originally. As you can see, they are a pretty good unit and they will be quite useful on the Western expansion, which is a case I'm now waiting for them to be able to recruit more troops. This is going to take one turn to do and it actually takes three turns to recruit. That's going to be annoying. It means that the Western expansion still got a little way to go before I can actually can carry on with it. Everything else is still building along quite nicely though, regardless, uh, over in the western provinces. Uh, with Scopia now finally been built, I had a look for the options and went f straight away for the land clearance. You can imagine a little bit of extra money and a bit of extra population growth won't do me any harm. Over at Sofia, I was a bit indecisive about what to do, so I just left it for the moment. And up in Belgrade, as you can see, I've still got another turn before the Orthodox Church is built, and then from then on, I'll be able to try and deal with the problems with religious unrest. Orthodox faith is still pretty low, it's only a third of the population are following it, but hopefully the church should help things out a little bit anyway. I just decided to build a brothel just because I thought that might be useful and be allowing me to train, train some more spies as well as improve the happiness of the settlement, but that will be built for another couple of turns. Meanwhile though, over in the east, I go back to Bowser's Castle to check out the state of the retraining so far. I managed to get a couple of units done, but I still got a few more turns before I can finish doing them. And there's only one more unit I still can't retrain right yet at the moment. But I did notice this, I can recruit Turkish Javelin men. Now, comparing them to my Contest Day, they are more expensive, but as you can see, their missile attack, as well as their defense and that, is a lot better than the Contest Day that I can recruit at the moment. They Having a unit or two of these Javelin men might prove quite useful in the upcoming battle against the Turks. And then take the opportunity just to go through some of the other regions to make sure everything's still being built nicely. Before just going out to check out the outlying regions. I haven't been to Kaffa for a little while since it's been upgraded to a town. So I take the opportunity now just to build some dirt roads and land clearance. As well as get a grain exchange that will give me a little bit of extra cash. I did realize as well that the public order has been sorted out to an okay enough level that I can actually increase the tax rate a bit. Should hopefully give me a little bit more extra income. A trip is on, I still have to deal with the fact that it is surrounded by the Sajuk territory and it could be open to attack. So I w did decide that I'd try and recruit more troops, but I thought I'd wait a little bit longer actually to try and build a garrison quarters. Unfortunately though, I was, should have <laughs> built it up a bit quicker than I was hoping for, but never mind, these things happen. I did decide though to build a couple of toxic, an extra unit of toxicity, I should say, just to make sure things are okay. And Nicosia, I got this wooden castle on an island with nothing really I can use it for. It would be annoying for me to try and recruit troops and would sa sail them over to the mainland. So I might convert it over to a town once I actually get enough cash. But, although that could be for a couple more turns. I then took go to check out the rest of my agents because I forgot to finish them off last turn. Feofofus is going up towards the Danish. It should be in reach now of their capital. There we go. So we're going to Aarhus, if I pronounce that right. And I was interested really in trying to get in trade, or especially if I can get an alliance, that'd be even better. But as you can see, they've only got a so-so relationship with me and they're Catholic, which is going to cause some problems. And as you can see as well, alliance is very demanded, even though I might have offered map information in return. So I did do that, I don't know, I even tried to offer them some money for this, but it seems I didn't want to go for it. That's unfortunate, because that would have been a bit handy once I went to war against the other western provinces. Like I said, the empire in its golden days didn't reach up as far as Denmark, so it would have been useful to have Denmark on my side. I did offer to try and sweeten the pot, I was offering tribute now for a number of turns, but now they decided they weren't interested, so it's something I might have to try and deal with in a later turn, we'll see what happens. I also got a couple more agents I need to move around just to make sure they're done. 
Still got my fleet, for example, up going around the edge of Spain. It would still take a few more turns to get up to Scotland. But if I can secure the lines with them, it might be proved useful against the English. Although if they go too far into England, I may be forced to have to fight them up to the legendary Hadrian's Wall. I just take the opportunity to head down towards Africa to check out and see how Demetrios is doing. He's still there with his gold mines, he's still generating 318 florins per turn, which is a nice little bonus for me. And as you can see, he's still got a couple of trades, for example, employee security. Obviously he's been a bit concerned since he attempted to take over in the previous episode, and he's now got security of the mines. Increases his, decreases, I should say, his finances a little bit, but it helps out in other ways. With all the other units moving around then, I decided to end the turn. And I was quite surprised when it came to the purple states. As you can see, they brought a diplomat over the try and converse of mine. I seems originally that they were just interested in getting some trade rights. To be honest, I was a little bit too minded about this because on the one hand I was thinking, hmm, extra money from the trade. On the other side I'm thinking, well, I'm going to be attacking them in the future, which might not go down well if I already got some sort of agreement with them. So I decided that the money was going to win out and I wanted a little bit more from them. So I decided to give them a counter offer that in return for trade I also want map information because having that map information will be quite useful for me when it comes to trying to plan my invasion of Italy in the upcoming turns. So as you can see though it was barely accepted by them. They weren't really happy but at the end of the day I got what I want which is most important. I was quite annoyed to see during the Seduke Empire's turn that they sent an army to actually lay siege to Nersenia. Now, given their numbers and the gals and I kindly got stationed there, I was pretty optimistic about my chances. But then they decided to bring up yet another army, and I was more concerned that they might start bringing more armies up, so it means that Alexis is going to have to try and send his forces up north as quickly as possible to deal with this threat, despite the fact they haven't rested and still replenishing their numbers. <sighs> the reports all say the same thing, I mean, that the Turks have laid siege to the senior. God knows, I prayed that they would just give me more time. Time to let the men rest and a chance for me to... No matter. I hoped by sending their soldiers back they would have hesitated. Took it as a sign of good faith and make them less likely to attack us. One year. Just another year and we could have had the army back to full strength and put them on the defensive once more. But they've made their move and I have no choice but to march the men. Despite how I feel, I can't let them take any more land from us. I'll tell the captains tonight, and then from tomorrow, we'll march. At the start of my next turn now, Yoannis has been given the opportunity to adopt another noble into his family. I did notice as well that he's been given the epithet of the Shifuus, which I thought was quite an interesting choice for the game, as in history, Yoannis, or John II, became known as John the Good or John the Beautiful despite being an ugly man because it was down to his personality, his character was good and beautiful even though his physical features were not. Anyway, going back to the potential noble, Euronymous here is 17 years old and seems to be a pretty good fighter and also has the night fighter trait which I think is pretty good so I decided to accept him as an adopted son of Euronymous's. As you can see, the senior now is being under attack and just going for the rest of them Although this caused a bit of an issue. It seems that I had too much stuff being queued up and it meant that I have now got no money with only 25 florins this turn. I did get a, one of my nobles has now gone up a rank which is pretty nice and as you can see all these buildings are now been built but it means that I'm now really lacking in money. There's nothing I could do to try and improve that. But hopefully now I should be getting a little bit of extra money coming in as well as increasing the population a bit. Personally though, I was just glad to get most of the spending out of the way now, so hopefully in the upcoming turns I should start making a bit more money. Because I haven't got any money to actually spend this turn, I have to focus on the things that I can deal with, such as the siege and the senior and trying to relieve the garrison from the attacking forces. The only army that could do that though is Alexis's army down at Barris Castle. As you saw earlier, he's not eager to rush into another battle, but he can't allow the senior to fall into enemy hands. So he sends off the army minus those troops still waiting to be retrained. As although you can see there's still a couple of units such as the Toxite archers with 59 men are still not to full strength. But the other ones have got less people so he can leave them behind to be retrained and he sends the rest of them up. It's still going to take a couple of turns for him to arrive in a senior. But that's part of my plan for him. I, 
I imagine he's going to try and scare away the opposing forces. Either, or, either that or get them to commit to an attack on his senior where I can actually do as much damage as possible with the garrison. And then when he arrives he'll be able to counter and be able to deal with them. Over in the western provinces now, there's still not much else they can do, apart from sending Yoyanis' army down towards Corinth. As I said before, I'm going to be using Corinth as the main retraining station for a lot of my men, as well as be able to try and send my other troops up to Tehashion, where I'm going to have to start using them to retrain the Toxite and my Aquite. I continue to send the garrison up towards Belgrad. As you can see, the population up there is still a bit disillusioned, but hopefully with the extra garrison forces that should be arriving at the start of the next turn, will allow me to get them back up to a positive attitude regarding my wall. I also take the opportunity just to check out things. As you can see, I can't afford the land clearance that I had queued up, so I'm going to have to wait until next turn for that. Otherwise, there's not really much else I can do. I did decide to send my unit of cavalry that I had stationed at Sophia down to join up with the army of Corinth. And then from there, then I'll be able to get them retrained and hopefully be able to use them in the upcoming turns. With everything else really much done, there's not really much else I could do on this turn, so I decided to just go ahead and end it. Turn of 15 with Caliphat's turn, I was very surprised to see that one of the diplomats wanted to talk to me about negotiations and try to arrange a ceasefire between our nations. I was quite surprised considering that they were the ones who actually attacked me by trying to blockade my ports, but it does seem they got their priorities right, as you can see on the ha side that they want peace. And I, what I reckon is that it might be that given their enemies, the Crusader states might be causing them a bit of difficulty. So they probably want to cease fire with me. But as you can see, see as well, that they thought it was a very generous proposal to me to get a ceasefire. So I tried to get a bit more out of them. Trade rights, map information, they were all very happy to give me. And I even wanted to get tributes. I did negotiate. As you can see at the bottom, it's constantly a generous offer. And I put up the amount of money I wanted per turn, I offered the increase the number of turns I wanted to do. I eventually decided I was going to go for 800 florins for 3 turns. I thought to myself this would only give me a nice little boost of 2400 in the end. But also I didn't want to push my luck. I thought I didn't really want to make them too big an offer otherwise they might turn me down and I'll have to deal with an enemy. So I'd rather have the extra money coming in. So. As you can see, they accepted it, and we're now at peace with the team with Caliphate. During the Stuke Empire's turn, I watched as one of their small armies was moving my troopers on. It wasn't anything of a concern to me, as they've been doing it for quite a while. What was more disconcerting was to see that in Asenia, the sieging army is almost tripled in strength from what I last saw it. I didn't know where they got the additional men from, although I suspect it might have been that army that disappeared in the forest nearby a couple of turns ago. This means that the siege army is going to be too strong for Alexis to try and deal with by himself. I'm going to have to try and get additional forces to come from somewhere else. I was also a bit surprised during the Republic of Venice's turn. A diplomat came towards Kaffa and it looked like they were going to try and open negotiations for me to maybe improve upon the, the trade agreement I already had with them. Instead though, they actually decided to lay siege to Kadax, blockading the port and declaring war on me of all things. This has proved quite useful now for Yoyanis, as I was debating what to do with him regarding how to attack Italy and it seems that the Venetians have made his choice for him. So Callistus, the reports are true then. The Venetians have sent a fleet to blockade the port of Kadax. And you are sure there haven't been any warning signs of this attack? Anything that we should have been aware of? I see. The Venetians have forced my hand. This is true. I will have to send word to my father to build a fleet in due course. They have also made my route to Italy clear as well. Instead of coming from the south by sea, I will attack north over land. We will take their lands from them and return them back to the Empire's fort once more, before heading south and taking all of Italy. I look forward to Callistus to taking my first steps in a Rome belonging to true Romans once more. In the meantime, ensure that Venetian border is watched. We will need to train more men for the upcoming reclamation. After the end turn phase, where I saw that the Hungarians actually beat off and destroyed a Venetian army that tried to invade their lands up in the north, it's now my turn. As you can see, it's still a little bit more money this time around, but not as much as I would have liked. Hopefully, though, this will be sorted out in the upcoming turns. I do have a new family member as well that came of age, Alexius Pelebnogus, if I said his name right. As you can see, though, despite the fact that he hasn't really fought in a battle, he's still got the trait of faltering courage, which isn't good. It means he's going to be more suitable for the administrator position. But on the diplomatic information, as you can see, I've now managed to declare a truce to the Fatima Caliphate. 
but the, the Phoenicians have actually declared war on me as the attackers. And it seems that the Sajuks have now got another foe to deal with, which can only help me out because hopefully it will draw their armies away from my borders and allow me to try and recapture Ankara and Anconian. Doing this turn then, because of the little amount of money I actually have, I needed to sort out what I was going to do with Yoyanis' army. The Venetians I have nowhere near my borders as of yet, so I took the opportunity to send them down to Corinth and try to retrain whatever troops I can. As you can imagine, I've only got 300 and that's quickly gone down once I started retraining the men. So it's a case of just picking the best options as I could at the moment and meaning leaving the others then to be recruited and retrained in an upcoming turn. Uh, there's not really much else I can do uh, in the west apart from try and bring a couple of the units that would plan to join Ioannis' army down to Corinth ready to be in position and have a look then over at the Hashion where I see that my new co governor that's came of age Alexis has, has taken over. As you can see he's pretty good at taxes and though he's not the most loyal individual would be someone to keep an eye on. But it's a sh funny how he hasn't followed in the footsteps of his father, but it will be worth me maybe trying to convert, take over some of his platoons from his father to his son in an upcoming episode, because I forgot to do it this time. Over in the east now, it's up to me now to try and deal with the siege situation at Messenia. Alexius, though, hasn't got enough men to actually be able to combat them directly, so I had a bit of a clean plan. I'm going to use the garrison at Messenia as well as go to Constantinople and use Basilius Alexius, the emperor himself and all of his troops currently stationed in, including the Varangian Guard, to be in a position to be able to attack. Hopefully then, once Alexius is going to attack, it should be able to attack the, the besieging army of the Turks from three directions. But as you can see though, I couldn't actually reach him this turn. Which is very unfortunate. So my situation was, I just wasn't sure what to try and do. So I thought the best thing to do is just try and leave it for the moment. And I can come back to it. I had a quick look then at some of the other buildings, such as Barris, to see how the recruitment's going on and the retraining. As well as what the buildings have been building. But, as you can see, I haven't got that much money. Heading then to check out my agents, I go back to Theophorphus up in the north, who have been talking to the Danish. As you saw earlier in the episode, I haven't had the, the much luck with actually trying to get anything out of them. So I decided to try and muck around a bit more just to see if they would do anything. You see, my original offer then of an alliance and trade agreement and map information no, wasn't accepted. And then they decided just not to accept any more agreements for me this turn. I take Cosmos over on his internal journey, it seems, to the Silk Roads. I was wondering why it actually took him so long to get there, and I find out it's down to one of his traits. He has a trait called Aged Merchant, which actually reduces his movement by 20%, which adds up slowly but surely, so every five turns I'm missing out. Over here then, I decided to try and deal with the f fleet that's currently blockading Kadax. I've only got one fleet though in the region, as you can see, four ships and the Phoenician Navy does outnumber me immensely. I wasn't sure though, because they could have lost some of their men. Now, they didn't have that much of an advantage over me, in fact, as you can see, it's quite a ratio 50-50, so I, I attempted the battle, but it was a crushing defeat. None of my ships, oh, I lost one of my ships, I should say. But the others made a retreat, and I had no choice but to take them to Athens then, so in the following turn, to try and restore their numbers. I'm going to have to build up a, Felician, a fleet big enough, I should say, to try and deal with the Venetians. It will take a couple of turns then for my fleet to try and get back to Athens, but hopefully by that point, I should be in a position to be able to have some money to rebuild them. And with everything else done then, I ended my turn and allow the remaining of my troops to get themselves into position, including the garrison force on their way to Belgrade. During the Turks' turn, I noticed an army heading towards Trebizond, which was going to be slightly worrying as it does outnumber my garrison, but hopefully the walls of the t castle should be able to hold them back. The sieging army and a senior decided to retreat and try and hide in the nearby woods for my armies. This is an army I'm going to have to engage and root out at some point, otherwise there's just going to be a threat to my, me if I decide to try and expand or move my armies away. At the start of my next turn now, I get a notification that the Doge of Genoa is now dead, as well as the invitation of Troubadours arriving. 
As you can see, it would cost me a thousand florins, but it could improve my image and inspire any of my princesses near the capital, so I decided to take that offer. Now that I've got a nice bunch of money. I'm now number one in the world as, now again as the leaders of production, as well as now the most advanced faction, which is quite nice to see. A couple of buildings now have been built, especially the garrison quarters of Tribazant, and a couple of units have been retrained. Uh, diplomatic information was all that so everything has been well done and dusted. This time I decided to start with my agents. I sent for your forfus up to deal once more with the Danish kingdom. I decided to just go for rather just simple thing. I wanted to try and offer them trade rights and map information. It was a generous offer, but they weren't going to accept any offer of an alliance, so I had no choice but to try and make it. I also got now a mission success, as you can see, and I've been given two units of Conta Day at the capital. This would be quite useful for one of my armies in the upcoming turns. I sent Cosmos now on his internal quest to try and join the Silk Roads. I'm surprised he hasn't died at this point, considering how long it's taken him. And as you can see, it's still going to take nearly at least 8 to 10 turns. As I said, this is down to these aged Merton traits, which does reduce his movement by about 20%. Yes. My fleet that's been heading over to Scotland this entire time of Vakos is finally arrived, and I'm going to try and use him now to find one of the Scottish towns or castles in the region. Simple case of following the road, although left or right, took me to Edinburgh. So as you can see then, I could have engaged in the next turn, but I decided to talk to one of the captains, Captain Fingren, in, uh, straight away, and uh, then it hopes to try and make some sort of alliance. We do have a so-so relationship with them, and every, as you can see, uh, England and Norway are some of their enemies. But we should at least be able to try and get some idea from them. So I decided to go for map information I was going to offer them, as well as trade rights and an alliance. In return, I did want money. So I made the offer and they accepted it. I could have gone for more money, I think, in terms of tribute, but I was pretty happy with what happened. And as you can see now, I've now got an alliance with them and improved my relationship with them in the process to good. This should hopefully be quite useful when it comes to attacking the English, although I may have to break my alliance with the Scots in the future if it means them getting in the way of me capturing England. This turn now as well, I've now got a nice sum of money. I've got it had over three and a half thousand, four and a half thousand, if it weren't for the fact that I decided to hire the troubadours. So I now have the opportunity to recruit the men and retrain them that are the men that I wanted in Corinth. I'm going to use the scouter toy unit that I have available to retrain so I have a nice strong center. And I plan then to have the other spearmen, the katoa toy, on the flanks and then be able to send my skirmishers and other ranged units into cavalry into battle as needed. I still can't really do anything with the heavy horsemen I got in my army. This is something I'll have to try and deal with in an upcoming, t in an upcoming episode, once I have the facilities to be able to replenish their forces. Here you know, is still trying to get into Corinth to try and join up with the army. I have to decide really what am I going to do in terms of this army's balance and layout. Am I going to hire any more units such as the blister that I built in Arta? Am I going to put any more units in and what should I actually be doing? This is something I'm really going to have to decide at some point so I have at least a basic layout for the army. For Over in Belgrade I have yes. now got public order in the positive for a nice little change as well as a strong garrison. Nicolaus is still con busy converting the populace over to the true faith, and with the building of the Orthodox Church, I've now been able to get a priest as well as be able to retrain a unit of spearmen finally. <coughs> Excuse me. Going for the weakest one will allow me then to actually get the. well, get them over and done with quickly and have a stronger gas in the future. I did send my s uh, spy over to the nearest Venetian town of Ragus. Because that will be my first target for Johannes once his troops are replenished. As I said, he's decided now to try and go over land to the north, and head to the top of Italy and head straight down rather than trying to sail over sea and leave a potential enemy in borders with the kingdom. Yes. 
Over in the east, now that the Turkish army has gone into hiding, I decided to send the Emperor Alexius back to Constantinople and with his army and take the units of a contest day that I managed to pick up thanks to completing that mission with Danish to join up with Yoyanis' army. This built up his forces a nice a little bit and should hopefully allow me to deal with that Turkish army once it comes out. With the money I had left over then, I decided to try and do a couple of things, such as going over to Barris and continue retraining these, the last of the men I had left stationed there. Although I can't do really anything about the Toxotay archers because I haven't got the facilities there to actually do them, I'd have to send them over to Dardania, I'd imagine, in the future. I decided as well in Dardania and Elia to actually build a mounted Aquitay unit because I always found them pretty handy with their javelins, and it's a case of trying to decide what I was going to do in the other regions. There wasn't really much else I could do, so I'd check out the other ones such as Rhodes and Kadax. Yes, I did remember as well that I had that fleet led by, uh, as you can see, Ma Admiral Dionysus, who was attacked the Venetians in the Lopf's turn and didn't turn out too well. So I sent him over to Athens where I was going to try and build up the forces a bit better and should hopefully allow me to deal with any of the Venetian fleets that had my way. Everything else done then, as you saw, I decided to end my turn once more. During the Sajuk Empire's turn, our army that decided to hide from me in the forest has now left my lands, seemingly heading towards Ankara there in the north, although I'm not sure at this point what they were going to do. The army near Tribazon is continuing to head towards the castle, probably to lay siege. If I remember right, they actually did lay siege to it now. We'll find out in a second, actually. Yes, they did. Now, this is going to be unfortunate for me because... Well, the garrison is not the best there, and they do outnumber me. But in order to try and get into Tribazon, they will have to fight my men, and I'd be able to at least try and cause a few casualties with the upcoming siege battle. At the start of my next turn, I'd be given a new mission by the Council of Nobles. It seems they want me to blockade the port outside Ragusa, and if I do this, I get some military units in return. I thought this might be the worth the risk, especially to get some more units. And all I need to do is wait for my fleet as you... As you can see here, they're still badly damaged from their attempted attack of the Venetian navy. And all I need to do is get them into Athens and replenish their forces. Unfortunately though, this is going to take a little bit of time. And when I went to go and retrain them, I was only able to do one unit. So I decided to go for the heavily damaged one of just 13 men to begin with. And then should hopefully be able to build up the others within a couple of turns. Quick enough for me to deal with blockading the port. Tribazon now has been besieged by the Turks, as you saw earlier on in this episode, and I wasn't really sure if I was actually able to recruit more men. I just probably did it in a vain hope that I was able to. It's been a little while afterwards since I actually played Medieval 2. I might have been able to. They've already built some siege equipment up, a battling ram and a ladder, although I can't imagine a Turk man cavalry using the ladder or too effectively. It depends what their army builds like. Tribazon can actually hold out for another five turns. Which is not going to be helping me out too much in terms of reinforcements as I won't be able to get anyone into position in time. But it will tie up that army for a little bit. Finally then, on the faction announcements, I notice that I've now got a princess that I can use in the campaign. Theodora Komonos. Only being 14 years old, she's apparently intoxicatingly charming. And should hopefully be quite a good diplomat. Or even be as a tool in securing a better alliance, perhaps with another faction, marrying her to the faction leader or heir. I'm not entirely sure what I was going to do with her at this point. It's just something to be able to consider in the upcoming turn. Finally, then, then I get the construction reports that things have been built. For example, in Tahashia, the stables have been built, allowing me to be able to build my mounted units. And a few units have been either retrained or recruited in numerous areas around the map. Finally then I decided to bring this episode to a close so I hope you guys tune in to the next episode of the Phoenix Rises where we're going to find out what Alexius and Yoyanis is going to do regarding the upcoming expansion to the west and to the east. During his time of rest for Yoyanis' army he was quite surprised that the Venetians had not only decided to declare war on the empire but there had been no signs of any armies coming overland to attack. He decided to leave agents near Dahachia and to warn him should any Venetian colours appear, while he retrained the men and took advantage of the improved facilities of Corinth to supply his soldiers with better equipment and training. Alexius in the meantime was unsuccessful with his attempt to attack the Sajuk army besieging the senior, although with the aid of the Emperor Alexius himself and the Constantinople garrison, the Sajuks were driven back to their lands. With money flowing into the imperial coffers once more, it wouldn't be too long until his army were ready once more to lead the expansion east. 
Although part of him was not eager for more bloodshed, another part of him still wanted that glory that would come from defeating the Turks, and it was this part that drove him onwards.